Hi, this is Ashley. I can't come to the phone right now. Leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks! Hey there, Ashley. It's Steven. I haven't heard from you in a while, so I wanted to call and check in. I also do have that favor that I owe you, so I just wanted to see when you, um... You know, when you wanted to get that done, but if you're too busy, which, you know, that just happens, that's adult life, isn't it? So, just go ahead and call it in on me whenever you want to, whenever it's convenient. Hope you're doing well, Bye bye Oh boy. I can say this without hesitation, Norm of the North is one of the worst films I've reviewed. At that time, I knew sequels were in production and said I'd probably review them as well. Three years have passed since then, bringing us not just a second and third film, but a fourth film just recently, and a fifth film is already in production. The work is cut out for me, so I better get started. This is Norm of the North, Keys to the Kingdom. The film opens with Norm posing for an ice sculpture, being made to honor him as the Arctic's new king. My first bust on a glacier! Uh, hey dad, should I have my crown on for this? Thank goodness for subtitles, otherwise it might have taken me a few minutes to realize that was Norm. Surprise, surprise, Rob Schneider is not reprising his role. To be fair, even with the first film being so bad, Rob Schneider brought a lot more energy to the role than his replacement does. Tell your friends, free snow cones for everybody, big party. <laughs> There's very little enthusiasm for Norm's kingship ceremony until he gets a call from his friend in New York, Olympia. We just heard from the mayor. Norm, you're getting the key to New York City. And since you can talk, they want to bring you down here again for a ceremony. So no more cover story about being an actor. You're a bear who can talk, and New York knows that. Okay. Bad idea, dude. Don't listen to him, Norm. This is a good idea. Probably what the creative team kept telling themselves as they were churning out these sequels. A lot of the Arctic animals have concerns that Norm's clumsy nature will cause embarrassment. Even his son, Quinn. I think you should tell Dad to stay here. He's got no business going to New York. Do I love him? Yes, but do I think he'll go to New York without embarrassing himself? No. In the last movie, Norm was a beloved spokesperson and a viral dancing animal on the internet. He's gonna be fine. Norm overhears Quinn, and then he invites him along for the trip. I figure we need some one-on-one -on -one time. It'll be fun. Awesome! Don't be nervous. You got this. As if the previous scene didn't even happen. Same goes for the Lemmings, who don't stay behind when Norm tells them to. They were vital to your mission in the first movie, so that's kind of a dick move. Personally, I think it would have been funny if they had stowed away on the boat secretly and then popped out later as a surprise. So enlighten me. Why write that the lemmings are gonna stay behind only to immediately undo it? Really? You came to support me? Of course, Dad. They love you. You basic bastards. After arriving in New York and finding out that Quinn inherited Norm's unique ability to talk to humans... He does? Oh, yeah, he does. They have dinner with Vera and Olympia. I'm sliding on my butt for the whole Arctic to see. <laughs> <laughs> no way! <laughs> and then the kids go to bed, and the parents are, uh... Writers, you do know you can just focus on the important stuff for the story. Here, let's skip ahead a little bit. Just... <laughs> um, I've hit the credits. My bad. So that was Norma the North, Keys to the Kingdom, and let me tell you, that was a lot shorter than... Eh. Okay, yeah, I know. Let's get a picture of the kids sleeping on the couch together. I'll get my phone. Son of a seal! I left my phone up north! As it turns out, Norm's other kids, Maria and Chase, swiped his phone so they could livestream the key ceremony. Yeah, it's stealing, but in its own way, this is kind of sweet. We can try and triangulate his coordinates by using a combination of a peer-to-peer -peer traffic system and the city of New York's own proprietary mapping algorithms. Wow, Arctic education is top tier. Norm is introduced by the mayor of New York, who's presenting like he's got a gun to his head the whole time. It is my honor to present the key to the city, the highest honor we can bestow. 
It is a key that opens every single door in the entire city. I don't know what's weirder, that a master key for New York City was made at all, or that they're flaunting it in public. After mostly avoiding the potential embarrassment that had everyone on edge, Norm gives a speech. But here I am, representing the Arctic in New York City, accepting the coolest award ever, and I wouldn't have been able to do it without my family and my friends. Quinn, I love you like a son, buddy. I am your son. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of the Arctic, I want to thank you for this great honor. It's not terribly funny or impressive, but it is competent, which still exceeds my expectations. Can I offer you and your entourage a ride home? In this 40-foot stretch limo? Tempting. But when in New York, do as the New Yorkers do. I think we'll walk home. Turning down a ride with the mayor? You're the king of the Arctic. I'm a bear of the people. And you don't become a bear of the people by riding around in fancy 40-foot limos. I may detest these movies, but I can't deny. Norm is a stand-up guy. Which, of course, leads the movie into a plot point trying to contradict that trait. Is Norm of the North a bank robber? <laughs> Money is vanished from three banks. We're looking into it. Someone stole the key to the city! Now let's take a moment to remember, evil deeds do not exist without the people evil enough to do them. That being said, what did I say about that key? We, we have, have to help. help. He's my dad. He's my best friend. But th that didn't need an explanation. Do the writers have the same confidence in their target audience as I do in them? Their investigation reveals a stolen Norm costume and the next bank to be targeted. And that bank is only a few blocks from the East River and the Atlantic Ocean. You know what that means? No, what? It means that the robber is prepared to make a clean escape! Naturally, the parents are upset that their kids are walking into a potentially dangerous situation. Stay where you are! I'm coming! We are coming! Norm, it's too risky. Half the city is looking for you. Yeah, Norm. You think you can get involved with a movie bearing your name in the title just like that? Ah! Oh, wow. It's just a disguise, relax. Well, as the old saying goes, life finds a way. As expected, the group finds the imposter at the Bank of Chinatown. And with Norm under suspicion, they take a step back, call the police, and wait for things to clear up. Right? He's running away! I got him. While Norm takes the stupid with him, the others meet the owner of the bank. More robbers, huh? No! We're trying to stop the robbers! This is Fong, the face of the Bank of Chinatown. I feel like animals that can talk to humans are going to become much less of a novelty as this series goes on. The chase ends very realistically. And I'm actually not being sarcastic here. Surprising, right? Norm gets arrested on TV for everyone at home to see. Did the Arctic grind to a halt so they could watch 24-7 coverage of Norm? They better have a way to charge that phone. Fong and the Lemmings bust in on Norm from a vent in the ceiling. That is a weekly secured jail cell. I have a very important message from your son, Quinn. Dad, you've always been a true king because you're so human. One, now is not really the time. Two, that's the exact opposite of what he said earlier. He's just not like us. He's too... human. They break Norm out and ambush the barge of money, where Norm has to fight two goons that are recycled from the first movie. You guys look familiar. I suspect the mantra for writing these gags was, there are no bad ideas. Who calls the shots for the henchmen? Who really stole the money? Huh. Let's return the money to the mayor. He'll know I'm innocent. He'll help us. <sighs> the mayor's the bad guy, isn't he? Let's give a big round of applause to the heroes of the hour, Norm of the North and Fong. Oh. Never mind. Someone bring us a bag of Fong's money for the picture. <laughs> 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 Uh, that bag smells like the mayor. The money smells like the mayor. Uh. Oh. <laughs> hey! This is the key to the city! Okay, forget I said never mind. You have to go to jail now. I don't think so. <laughs> These vehicles.
vehicles look like 3D models that the artists were supposed to add details onto before the movie was finished. This is beta at best. They've gone from Hollywood cheap to direct-to-video cheap. And they're still falling short. Even the Swan Princess sequels for their many, 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 many flaws feel more complete than this. Norm defies physics and somehow completely avoids evisceration before pulling a Batman. How about now? Are you ready to apologize now? I deserve this. And I'm sorry for everything I've done to this great city. All right, boys. Take me away. You'll explain motivations that don't need explaining and give us nothing about the mayor. Corrupt politician is an easy cliche to accept, but we barely got to know the mayor, so we have no idea why he was stealing that money, and since Norm is heading back to the Arctic, I'd wager we aren't gonna find out. And this movie still has 45 minutes to go, so why does it feel like an ending? Where are the cleaning crews? Are they on strike? Where'd these water bottles come from? It's still going, but what we're watching now doesn't feel related to what was just happening. King Norm speaking! Norm, my friend! How's the far north? Wait just a minute. These two storylines were first announced as two 45-minute sequels. But now they've crammed both into this movie. I... 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 <sighs> you know what? I've decided this is a good thing. Two sequels in one movie means one less video I have to make about this freaking franchise. The trash comes from a bottled water company that Norm's brother Stan traded with for hockey equipment. And no, Stan can't speak human all of a sudden, but he can understand them. Which means he also should have understood the gravity of giving away Arctic land. Why are you taking our ice? And on whose orders? Orders from our Prime Minister. He runs this company. Look! Far north water, the purest water there is. Oh, do forgive my earlier assumption. With the addition of this flashback, this once again qualifies as a singular cohesive story. <sighs> Norm calls Olympia for legal advice, because who else? What they're doing is technically illegal, since obviously no one gave them permission. Ah, uh, my brother Stan gave them permission. Wait a minute. According to the footnotes of Section 2B, Paragraph 3 of the Addendum to the Arctic Conservation Act, The intended audience is children, right? Stan isn't high-ranking. He's not in the government. And he's definitely not official. No, no, no! He is a high-ranking government official! Stan begged me to be in my cabinet, so I threw him a courtesy title of Vice King! I don't know what I was thinking. Far North Water is owned by the Prime Minister of Taknekistan, a country super into hockey, so Norm issues a challenge. My animals would like to challenge your workers to a best of three, winner take all hockey match. If we beat you, you leave. For good. And if you win, you take the ice. There's a little blame to go around, but the buck does stop with Norm in this situation. He gave in to his brother's whining and made Stan Vice King, so that bit of bad judgment is indirectly responsible for the ice harvesting. And now instead of negotiating, he's just putting the Arctic in more danger. Norm is advised that Stan's ego has a boo-boo over Norm being king. I need to make my brother a hero? So to prop him up, Norm makes use of the fact that Stan is very good at hockey. I want you to be our coach. What do you say, Stan? Lead us to victory? <laughs> Come here, you! <laughs> you guys know how there's a lot of half-baked animated shows out there based on popular movies? Next to those, this is just as uninspired, and its execution even worse. That impression only gets stronger when Stan gives Norm the cold shoulder by not putting him on the team. I swear if this movie ends with a lesson about appreciating each other, I am going to groan until my throat is raw. Fong, because I guess Norm's latest trip to New York gave his bank some good PR, agrees to fund the Arctic's hockey team. The wealthiest animal in the world. Is he backing their team? I can hear you! These big ears serve a purpose, you know. <laughs> Okay, that wasn't bad. And yes, I am Fong. And yes, I am back in the team. And yes, I am the re- Okay, this joke is overstated. It's welcome, let's move on. He reminds me of your brother. They both only care about themselves. No team. We can use that. Oh, God. They better not. 
does not get more pure than this. <laughs> hey! What the? Huh. For some reason, I thought this was gonna go the direction of recruiting Stan to the other team. Yeah, it's really stupid, but you never know with Norm of the North. Now I'm just confused. What does sponsoring an opposing player accomplish? I'm open! Relax! I got this! Whoa! Ooh, he got ticked so Maria, she's open on the wing! Until you can stop a single shot, why don't you let me handle the strategy there, Mick? Oh, they're feeding his thirsty ego as a way to sabotage the team as a whole. Admittedly, that's a good move. Norm lectures Stan for his recklessness, and Stan expresses himself in return. This is the first time in my life I've been the best at something! The first time in my life I've had my own thing! You ran the shows for tourists for years and loved every minute of it! That's not the point! Then what is, Stan?! This! Right here! This is my brain! This mess started with Stan just being a clueless buffoon and has morphed into a midlife crisis of sibling conflict combined with the fact that the fate of the Arctic is hinging on a freaking hockey match! I legitimately can't fathom how movies like this can secure their financing. How many awesome Kickstarter projects are out there just waiting for people to support them that could have been fully funded with the money used to make that! For his attitude, Stan is fired from coaching by Norm and benched as a player by Fong. This leads the Arctic team to victory in Game 2, which leads Stan to a change in perspective. I thought sponsorships are what makes a bear great, but I was wrong. That's why I'm turning down my sponsorships. That's a novel gesture, but you were acting foolishly before you got the sponsorships. They are not what you need to apologize to the team for. With their goalie injured, Norm takes over for Game 3. The Prime Minister of Taknikistan is wary after Game 2, so he resorts to drastic measures. We are bringing in the national team. But, boss, this is our national team, no? The real national team! Those watching, I want you to take a moment to guess exactly what that means. <laughs> Answers locked in. Here we go. This is not the dumbest thing I've ever seen reviewing a movie, but it's up there, especially with what happens next. Three on three, right now. Why? Just once, can't we get bad guys cheated? Good guys win instantly. Are we that desperate as an audience for the dopamine rush of scoring the winning goal? The Arctic team does that, of course. And Taknikistan is properly punished for its cheating. The nation of Taknikistan will be stripped of all their medals and banned from the nation games for five years. Finally, Chase reprograms the robots to help return all the stolen ice. We get a little bit of lame banter, a wide shot of Arctic Mount Rushmore, and that's the end. So that was Norm of the North, Keys to the Kingdom. Obviously, I expected not to like this movie. What I didn't expect is that it was so bad, I kind of missed the first movie in a lesser of evil sort of way, granted. Character motivations are confusing, contrived, underexplained, or spelled out when they don't need to be. States of mind shift when the story needs them to without giving characters a good reason to change their thinking. And even then, a lot of moments don't feel motivated by anything other than making another dumb joke. Honestly, this review would be longer if those weren't so easy to skip over. Trust me, they're just as bad as the ones I did show. These plots are high-stakes situations on paper, but the tone consistently fails to convey the urgency behind them. The second plot is made especially frustrating by the characters behaving like self-centered, cranky children while their home is on the line. There might be a little more to say, but in the end, reviewing this movie has been little more than a drain on my patience. And yet, in how bad it is, I do see some ways in which it could have been better. By a mile, my biggest problem is that the movie tells its two stories separately instead of weaving them together. Here's my pitch. Technikistan is farming ice when Norm is invited to New York. 
While there, Norm raises awareness and issues the hockey challenge. The mayor is sponsored by Far North Water, and Technikistan's business goals would be easier to pursue with Norm out of the picture, so they conspire to frame him for the bank robberies. Clearing Norm's name would be the main plot, hockey the secondary plot. Stan being a dingus? Cut. All the while, Norm can still question if he's capable of being a good king, before ultimately rising up with family and friends to win the day. Obviously, my version will never exist, and only fixes so much. But hey, if I'm gonna put time into complaining about Norm of the North, might as well be constructive about it. And I'll try to discuss its plot hole with the same spirit in mind. Why did Norm and his posse go after the barge on foot rather than taking Fong's helicopter straight away? While boarding the barge was possible from the helicopter, it's a better strategy to sneak aboard and take over the ship before it leaves. A helicopter does not make for a stealthy approach, and it was only necessary to use it after the barge was out to sea. That's not the point! Then what is, Stan?! 